different sort of video this week. Instead of advanced Dungeon Master tips, we're going to do a deep dive into the fundamental math of 5th edition by exploring some numbers that are really important to the system. Zero is the minimum number of hit points a character can have. Not using negative HP, like in previous editions, drastically changed how healing, recovery, and death were going to work in 5th edition. Now any negative effects that can befall a KO'd character have to get resolved either using the death saving throws or the condition rules. One is the number of times you can cast spells at a new level after you first gain access to them after the third spell level. And more often than not, this is all you get when you level up as a full caster. And this is interesting because it gives a baseline for what you can expect from non-magic classes. What sort of abilities the designers and the playtesters sort of think are on equal footing. Now I know that all classes don't level up at the same rate and that they get their power differently. But still, overall, it gives a little bit of insight into what we can expect from non-magical, mostly passive abilities. A single use of a fourth level spell is given at the same time the monk and the rogue get evasion and the paladins get their minor aura. And a single use of a new sixth level spell is given at the same time that fighters get their third attack and paladins get a flat plus D8 to all of their damage. Two is the bonus to hit or damage in the base fighting styles. This is important because if all the fighting styles are considered equal, this gives us some insight into how the system weighs damage and accuracy versus a straight bump in AC. Because monsters scale mostly by damage, not accuracy, an increase to AC is rare and valuable. Therefore, the other fighting styles have to do something to make up for it. And they do it in contrast to the AC bonus, which is static. They scale it, that plus two bonus, through the extra attack feature. Three is the maximum number of attunable items. This keeps the, the magic economy in check and stops the players from essentially becoming mannequins for magical items. And why did they choose the number three? Well, yes, partially because of balance reasons, but also because three is a magical number in a lot of folk tales and literature. Five is the minimum number of hit points a first level wizard can have. This is a step up from the traditional D4 because the design team found that too punishing. In the 10th printing special edition, they had an errata in there that fixed a bug in the rules where you could lose hit points when leveling up. However, that change in the rules only applies to levels two and up. So technically, if you wanted to play a wizard and you chose to dump Khan from your standard array stats, you could start with six minus one hit points. So five is the floor for the minimum HP for frail characters. Seven is the average hit point increase per level. In your typical party of four adventurers, a fighter, wizard, cleric, rogue, with a average of a plus two con bonus, because again, no one really dumps con, or we can assume when we design that no one's gonna dump con. They will all get an average of seven hit points per level. This is the base for how hard monsters hit. It maps to the damage per round per challenge rating table in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Eight is the expected healing from cure wounds. A D8 averages to five, and the designers assume that you maxed your main at first level. What you have to notice is that this mirrors getting hit with a long sword the HP delta is exactly the same. Looking through the playtest, Cure Light Wounds has always been a D8. So we can conclude that non-magical healing, hit dice and long rest recovery were molded around this constant of first level magical healing, restoring nine hit points. Nine is the number of times you can access a new level of spells. In a full of caster's entire adventuring career, dozens if not hundreds of hours of play, do they ever get the chance to experience something new? Each one has to feel significant and important. So much so that the spell list, really which effects are first available when, are so important that most of the other game's class features are roughly balanced around it. 10 is the lower split of the D20 and 3D6. 10 is absolutely neutral. It's the AC of an average unarmored human, the DC of a moderate task, and plus zero from abilities. 11 is the max standard bonus for an ability check or an attack roll. It is the cap for bounded accuracy. If faced with a hard task, DC 20, the heroes will succeed more than half the time. 60% in fact, more than twice as likely as when they were first level heroes. And it's even within the realm of possibility for them to achieve superhuman feats, hit DC 30 tasks. The bonus to the D20 roll from your ability score has been fixed since before the first playtest packet. It's hard baked into the game. So it's the proficiency bonus that does the work in establishing what the max total bonus relative to the D20 is, and thus what percent chance will play in determining the success or failure of a task throughout the entire game. Interestingly, universal proficiency bonus was added quite late in the playtest. Before that, individual classes had to hit bonuses and skill die were added to the ability checks. 
12 is the max damage of melee weapons. Rage, ability scores, class features that can be tweaked with play testing. But rolling and getting a 12 has to feel like a solid hit no matter what. 13 is Mage Armor's AC. And it's important because it's gonna be with you pretty much for your entire career as a wizard. So dialing it in exactly is crucial. Too high and the fighter feels cheated because access to armor is part of their kits. If it's too low, the wizard will feel cheated at lower levels for wasting a spell slot only to be mildly harder to hit. 15 is the number of hit points an orc has. This is important for establishing the baseline of fiction in the world. Should a first level fighter be able to down an orc in a single hit with their sword? What about on a crit? How many arrows from a guard should it take to down an orc? Because there's not a whole lot of wiggle room in what the weapons can do in terms of damage, one through four through one through 12, hit points, which are a lot more malleable, got used to dictate how tough a certain creature is compared to the collective imagination of fantasy culture. 18 is what's max possible on 3d6. It's the legacy for what represents a good ability score. You're the top of the bell curve. And you can't change it because it's already seeped into pop culture. Literally generations of people know that if you have an 18 charisma, that means something. 20 is the AC of plate mail plus shield, and it's also the highest number you can roll on a d20. And I don't think it's a coincidence that even if you don't have the auto hit on a 20 rule, an untrained commoner wielding a sword without practice could still strike a fully armored knight 5% of the time. It builds an internal logic to the rules and helps mechanically establish their storytelling goal of heroic fiction. Yeah, that's it. That's the video, folks. This is a different one than the types I normally do. Right after I'm done filming this, I'm going to film the announcement video for my project. I'm really excited about that. There is a sign up in the video description right below the like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you think about something in the math that I might have missed, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. If these went above 20, I'd have to mention 84, which is the virtual daily damage of a third level wizard spell slots. You compare that to the champion fighter to get an idea of the encounter per day balance.